Hello everyone, and welcome to a tutorial on NS List Formatter. This is not part of any particular series that I have, but I might just create a new series of random tutorials that I create, and I just wanted to create random tutorials, and I can do that. So, this tutorial is on NS List Formatter, and NS List Formatter was introduced in iOS 13 and Mac OS 10.15, and it is kind of as it describes, it allows you to format a list of items. So for example, if I had Lucas and I had the string Laura, and I put those into a list formatter, it will format that as Lucas and Laura. And if I had, let's say three people, it would be Lucas comma Laura comma and Sam in this case. So that's the general idea of list formatter is that it will format a list of items in a locale that by default will be your current locale, but you can specify if you want it to format in a different language. The only downfall, uh, or at least one of the downfalls that uh, I've noticed, is that there's no way to customize this and type. So if you wanted to say, have an ampersand for English, um, there isn't really a great way to do that, at least directly with the API. Um, but those are some of you know how it's used and some of the limitations of list formatter. So in Swift to use NS list formatter, there's the list formatter uh, class and the general way the easiest way to create a list of things is to use this localized string by joining um, method here and we can simply put some objects in and if I run this code we can see we get exactly what I expect and if I throw in a third person you can see that it works exactly as you expect uh, however you have your current locale set up now let's look at some of the other APIs on list formatter. And so there's the ability to set the locale if you want, but by default, it will just be your current locale. The item formatter is something that you can specify and it will allow you to format individual items. We'll talk about how that works at the end of this tutorial. And then there's also the ability to customize uh, or give a representation rather for objects. So if you have some kind of object, you can uh, get this formatter to ask for a particular string representation of it, and it will format the object using that string and give you back a list of all the items. So let's talk about uh, that, that, that approach that we were just talking about, which is formatting a list of items that are perhaps non-string items. So in Swift, uh, I might do this by making a struct. And let's just say I have a struct for a movie, and we're just going to say that perhaps there is a localized name that we might want to represent for the movie. I don't actually know if movies are <laughs> really localized, but uh, at least the name of them, but I'm sure in other countries they probably do change the name of some movies. Um, so anyway, there's the movie, and uh, we want to format this. So this is the only class method on list formatter. If I want to use the uh, string method that exists to convert, I have to create an instance of list formatter for that to work. So we will have to go ahead and do that. And generally speaking, there is a performance hit for initializing or creating a new list formatter. So if you're doing this in production code, you generally want to have just one instance of it instead of creating a new one every time you want to use it. So let's go ahead and use this string from API. And I'm going to put in a bunch of movies. So let's just say we have, um, what's a movie? Pulp Fiction. Um, we'll also throw in Memento, and let's just try out this, this formatter. So by default, we're not going to get any representation for this because it doesn't really understand how to get the description for this movie, right? And so it's going to fall back to just the description of the movie it's, uh, for the struct in Swift. Now, let's look at the... Um, the header here to see what we actually can do or how we can give it that string. So if we look uh, over here, we say, uh, see it says each item is formatted using the item formatter, okay? But we don't have one of those. So if the item formatter does not apply to a particular item, the method will fall back to the item's description with locale or localized description if implemented or description if not. So basically the two that I'm gonna show you today are description and localized description, and we're gonna talk about some of the implications of that. So the description one is actually easy to do. Um, we can basically say custom string convertible, and then we implement description, 
and we can just uh, let's just return the name for this particular situation. So as you can see, we automatically will get Pulp Fiction and Memento, which is what we expect. Now, um, the interesting thing about this is that this is a struct, and because list formatter is implemented as an Objective C type, um, it doesn't really understand all these different things that it might understand. And uh, you'll notice that if I get rid of the protocol that defines uh, this, this custom string convertible, it doesn't just see this description method. So it, it has some weird sort of swift implementations around it to understand that if it's a custom string convertible, it can use this description method. Now, unfortunately, there is no such equivalent for, at least that I'm aware of, if somebody does know of one, let me know in the description below or the comments section. But uh, the other method that it says I should be able to implement is this localized description method. And what I found though is that if I do implement this method, it doesn't actually give me what I want. And uh, when I say method, I really mean computed property in this case, but um, I'm pretty sure this is what the Swift expectation would be. But it still will not understand uh, what this is. And I believe the reason for this is because there is some, there must be some Swift underlying way of, of detecting this because this isn't a dynamic uh, dispatch like it would be in Objective C. So, um, for example, if I switch this over to be um, a class now, so I'm going to say this movie is going to be a class. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to tell Objective-C that this method or this computed property is going to be a dynamic property or it's available in Objective-C. And we can do that by saying at Objective-C. And now if I go ahead and run this, we will see that it'll actually give me Pulp Fiction and Memento. So it will see this method if uh, you have the at Objective-C uh, prefix on it. Otherwise, it will not. And because that will change sort of the dynamic nature of it, whether it can be exposed to Objective-C or not, because by default, it's a static um, static method, basically, and Objective-C can't just in, in, inspect uh, those methods. So um, yeah, if you want to have this work with localized description specifically, you do have to change this to be a class, and you do have to expose this to Objective-C, at least as far as I can tell. I might be wrong about this, and if I am, feel free to correct me in the comment section below. All right, the last thing that I want to talk about is this item formatter. And this is kind of a fun little thing as well, where we can individually format the items that we want. So if, in, if perhaps you don't actually want to implement this localized description or you want to have somebody else format it, this is an approach you can take. So let's just say that we have a number formatter and we will create number formatter. And on the number formatter, I'm going to set the number style to be, and there are many different number styles you can have. Uh, what I want is the spell out option, and that allows you to just spell the number out in whatever language you're in. And then I would just want the list formatter to go through an array of numbers. So if I have one, two, and three, for example, and it should work. Let's just try running it again. And here we go. So we can see we get one, two, and three. And um, that was actually my mistake that I never set the number formatter on the list formatter. So this is actually what it's going to do if you don't uh, set the number formatter on it. But what I want to do is I want to get the individual item formatter to be this number formatter. And so now what this will do is that individual items will be formatted using our number formatter. And now you can see we actually get that spell out that we try to create right here. All right, so we get one, comma, two, comma, and three. And of course, the benefit of all of this is that if you're trying to make your app work in any other language other than the one you're currently operating in, um, then this is a great way to format a list of items. So hopefully this is a helpful tutorial for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. Please give me a thumbs up on the video and subscribe if you enjoy this content. All right, I'll see you guys next time.